Yo, what's up, YouTube Picture with a Franchise Guy? Coming at you again with another episode of MLB The Show 19, Road to the Show, featuring Chance Bishop. We're in the All-Star Game. So that's always a great, great, great thing to happen right now. And I mean, we're the best player in the league, hands down. Like, there's no reason why we shouldn't. So we have come in this game, 131 career home runs. So as you can tell, we're a bit of a power hitter. We really are, and that's it's a great thing. I mean, probably hit a little too many home runs, but I'm sorry, but that's just, most of my gameplay is done through sim, and the sim just does it sometimes. Like my power is super, I guess super super high. I mean, currently I, at this point, my right-handed power is. In like the low to mid 90s, and my left handed powers in like the mid 80s or low to mid 80s, and then the back gives me a plus 15 power boost, so it's over 100 power to righties, and my lefty power is in the 90s, so it's not like I'm sitting here playing on beginner mode with the sliders jacked all the way up, just going yard every at bat. I don't. But, as you can tell right here, Chance Bishop, not the greatest at the home run derby right now. Only at two home runs so far, just under two minutes currently. So, he's, um, struggle busting to say the least. He's not having a great time. Like, he is straight up not having a good time right now. Like, the best power hitter in the league. Gonna take a selfie right here. Okay, I guess that works. This is how that's... I guess that's how that works. But we needed 12 home runs in a minute 20. I mean, we took that break and we took a selfie and then they hit back to back home runs. Oh, no, that doesn't help us one bit. Neither does that one. So I think back to back years, Chance Bishop's going to be an all star. And back to back years, Chance Bishop is not going to win the home run derby, even though he's been in it. I mean, look, he's at five home runs. He's, tr he's trying to make it respectable right now. He really is. He's not going to try to have a five, like a 12 to 2 blowout. So he's making it respectable. You know, six home runs is one more, one more swing right here. 12 to 7. Respectable. Respectable to say the least right now. I don't know why I'm so bad at home run derby. I guess I just, I just am. Bonus time right now, 12 to 8. And that's going to line out. Yeah, five seconds left. And that's going to dead. I mean, Chris Bryant, good on him. He's a Met now, so I don't really like him. So, that's one thing that we are going to worry about, is that Chris Bryant no longer plays for the Cubs. He plays in division now for the Mets, of all teams, who don't really seem to like to go after big free agents. But Juan Soto ends up winning it all. Way to go, Juan. Juan Soto, it's like a 95 overall currently. It is like second or third, I guess this is like his fourth year in the league. So it's just, he sims amazingly. Like, he's, like if you thought Chance Bishop sims really well, Chance Bishop is like an 85 overall. Juan Soto sims even better. Juan Soto is legit like a 95 at like 23. So he has like one of the biggest upswings in this game. It's absurd. Like, I've seen some career sims where they've done Juan Soto. And in, like, three years, he's a 99 overall. And then he stays 99 overall until he's, like, he's, like, 34, 35. And he just puts up insane numbers. Like, it's absurd how much talent Juan Soto has. He's, a, he's legit a great player. And he's gonna have a lot of things going for him in his career. But, yeah, he's gonna just have to... Learn how to be, like, a great player. I mean, learn how to, I don't know, not make dumb mistakes in his life. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. I'm just kind of rambling. But uh, top of the fourth right now, down to six to one already. Jeez Louise, going to ground out. Not as good as our last All-Star game, where we went yard and ended up winning. But Boston Red Sox are now, pretty sure we played them in the World Series last year. So they know who I am. Uh, in the field right now, bottom seven, four chance Bishop. Ball's going to be just 
lightly grounded. Gonna fire on to first. Look at that. Easy play. Easy peasy. The lemons are squeezy. But Bishop, top nine right now. They actually sub him out, which is kind of weird because I don't think they bring enough third basemen sometimes. So, there's enough position players to sub everyone out. But we're going to get a one RBI double right here. And I'm losing that game, of course. But taking on bat to the regular season. Start off our first at bat against the Marlins with a fly out to left field. I mean, the Marlins. Must be a shame for everyone plays with the Marlins because uh, last night JT Riomuto just hit his 20th home run of the season. You know, we still have all of September left and like two days of August. So, people call him the best catcher in you know, baseball. You know, he's primed to win back to back silver sluggers. You know, the position change, you know, really does help. You know, even he was saying it at his press conference when he came to the Phillies. That sometimes you hit a ball where you just kind of like, just feel like it goes yard. Just full on, just big boy swing it. And then it dies out and like midway in left field. Yeah, you'll hit a home run in some parks, but there's going to be lazy, you know, fly balls to the gap. Or you might get like a single to the gap because you're not running quite that hard as you think. You're like, oh, I just, you know, mashed a homer. Nope. But Chance Bishop, teams on definitely on Chance Bishop's do not play list are the Mets and the Marlins. Braves are also on that list too. But if the Braves are going to give Chance Bishop a pretty hefty paycheck, I mean, if they're going to offer Chance Bishop a better paycheck than the Phillies, I mean, might as well just go for the money. But look, that gets that one on the line right there. She didn't think there's a line. We throw it to second, and we got a minus for fielding for some reason. Top of the tenth, we're going to strike out, so that's never a fun thing to do, because we're we're this team's offensive juggernaut, and we're going to strike out swinging, and it's the Marlins of all teams. Look at that. Fires on second again. To just try to get the force out. We're going to get another minus in fielding. Top of the eleven. You know, no one else is on base. We're just going to fire on to first base right here. Gets the out. So we're we're doing something. We're making money. We're making magic happen. Top 12 right now. Bishop's going to send this one to deep right center field right there. Both half here are going to go after it. But nothing's going to come to fruition. You know, firing on the first. <laughs> Can't quite get the speed right there. Top bottom 12. I mean, two men on. No one's out currently, so it's never a fun thing. It's going to be a ground ball to Bishop. He's going to run to third, jump, throw it, and he's going to be out maybe. I can't tell a chance Bishop's standing in the way. But, uh, yeah, two and one out, darn. That's unfortunate. But top of the 14th, Bishop comes up clutch. You know, hits the... Game, I guess, go ahead, home run to right center field. 409 feet, 110.6 off the bat. You know, Bryce Harper's there. He wants to go home. Hoskins there. He wants to go home. It's actually a two-run home run. My apologies. But he is, you know, coming up pretty clutch for this Phillies team. You know, everyone's celebrating in the dugout, except for, I guess, the manager right there. He's not looking at me. He's just watching the field. Look at that. Just left that ball in the center of the plate, and Bishop did not miss it one bit. Takes that one to right center field. Just clears the wall. I mean, if it's Citizens Bank Park, that ball is gone by like a mile. You know, that ball is top, top of his uh, opposing bullpen. I mean, it's not. It's that's not a good ballpark. It really isn't. Does the hell that's. It's a pitcher-friendly ballpark, and they don't have any good pitchers either. They're all, like, butt pitchers most of the time. I mean, sure, they had Jose Fernandez, and Jose Fernandez was a great pitcher. You know, so, like, a two five seven career ERA in the four seasons he's played before he passed. But, yeah, I mean, he was a great pitcher. He had, a you know, a great opportunity to do a lot of things. And it, his career was sadly shortened by a tragic 
boating accident. So that's never a fun thing to do. Never a fun thing to really think about. It's a shame that a franchise that, you know, has struggled for the majority of its duration, you know, gets a bright spot and, you know, gets two bright spots. Really, you have, you know, the entire team pretty much was a bright spot. You have JT Riomuto, you have Derek Dietrich, you have um, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, John Carlos Stanton, you know, Jose Fernandez, Luis Castillo, Domingo Germán. You know, Domingo Germán leads leads MLB in wins right now. In case you didn't know, Luis Castillo is the brightest, best pitcher the Reds have had probably since I don't know Tom Seaver. Pretty sure he played for the Reds. Might be the name of a different play, pitcher that played for the Reds, but I'm pretty sure it's Tom Seaver. I don't think it's actually Tom Seaver anymore. I think Tom Seaver played for the Mets, White Sox. No, I don't think it's Tom Seaver. I don't know who it was now. Uh, it's going to frustrate me. I don't know what pitcher I'm thinking about now. Um, But best pitcher since some Hall of Fame pitcher who ended up there for like two years. I mean... There's just all sorts of great talent that is, you know, come through this team, you know. Marcelo Zuna is like a 30 home run hitter. John Carlos stands a MVP candidate year in and year out when he's healthy. And Christian Yelich won MVP last year, and he's on pace to win it again this year. Do well, I think it's going to go to Cody Bellinger this year? Probably. I think Cody Bellinger has the slight edge over Yelich currently this year. But I wouldn't be mad if Christian Yelch were to win. It's not like the Warriors winning their fourth consecutive finals. Like, I don't care if you win an like, award. I mean, does he deserve it? Yeah, he deserves it. He's having a great year. Does Cody Bellinger deserve it? Yeah. Cody Bellinger's also having an amazing year. I saw this one, I saw this one post on Instagram where it was talking about uh, Cody Bellinger is an average player who's just having a good season, and someone called the MLB police Instagram account on him. And it's just like, so I guess you're gonna neglect the fact that he was Rookie of the Year, you know, had the former Rookie of the Year, um, former Rookie Year home run record before Pete Alonso broke it, and he was consistently like a great hitter and a fairly good defensive player for a first baseman stuck in the outfield. I mean. We did it to Reese Hoskins, but I think Cody Bellinger's got the one up just because Cody Bellinger's actually looking like a little athletic. But who knows? But Pete Alonso, let's get back to Pete Alonso. What a great player he's become. And it's absurd that I'm going to deal with him for the next, like, 10 years in the Mets organization because I'm a Phillies fan. But it's whatever. One player, one player can't win every game against you. I mean, but Pete Alonso. 41 home runs currently, just an absurd amount of home runs for him. Yeah, I I don't believe how good he is. It's absurd. I mean, you gotta think, well, baseball wants more more offense, so they juiced all the balls, and then it's like Pete Alonso has over 40 home runs before August is even done, and Cody Bellinger has more than 40 home runs before August is even done. But you know, a rookie coming out of nowhere, not only broke the single season home run record for the National League. He's, you know, kind of on pace to break the American League one, too, with, um, average is 52, but hopefully he doesn't. That'd be kind of, that'd be kind of wacky. I kind of look into something like that, but, you know, the Mets' current home run leader was 41 home runs to, like, Carlos Beltran and, like, one other guy. Yeah, well, Pete Alonso broke that as 42 home runs now, so what a absurd stat line some of these players are having this year. Absurd, I'm not saying absurd in like a bad way. I'm saying absurd in like amazement. Because, you know, when you're a rookie and you're hitting 42 home runs, that is absurd. That's an absurd stat line. That's an, um, it's an amazing amount of, you know, power between one guy. You know, it's, it's a shame that he's going to play on the Mets for a majority of his career. And he's not going to win anything because they're the Mets and they're not going to win because the Nationals are still average. Phillies are on the upswing and so are the Braves. And then, you know, a cruddy closer 
and Edwin Diaz, who only has 25 saves this year and has blown like seven. And the ghost of Robinson Cano and his exuberant contract aren't going to win you anything. So, that's always fun to think about. But if you guys like this episode, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys missed any episodes, just post down below. And until next time,